Time now for our focus report. The German Chancellor has made sure that climate change is high up the agenda at this weekend's G20 summit in Hamburg. And now the country that invented the diesel engine is having second thoughts about its use. Courts nationwide have instructed cities to limit the use of engines that pump out fumes in a bit to reduce pollution. Streets will be blocked off to vehicles that don't follow the so-called Euro 6 regulations by January. Anne Maillet and Nicholas Spicer have more in this next report. The end of the diesel car might start here, in Max Brauer Allee in Hamburg. A long street that cuts through a central neighbourhood. It was an air quality monitoring station in the middle of this street that set the alarm bells ringing. The nitrogen oxide levels had become a threat to public health. So the city made a radical decision. As of January the 1st, 2018, there'd be a total ban on the most polluting diesel vehicles. I live here and I have a child. The monitoring station has been here a while and we know that the concentration of dangerous gas is the worst in our street. Frankly, it's about time they woke up. What's happened with the diesel scandal is unacceptable. And that took place at the highest levels. Unacceptable, and yet Dieselgate, as it is known, continues to shock Germany. Several car manufacturers have cheated on anti-pollution tests for years now. The result? The levels of nitrogen oxide produced by diesel motors are far too high in 80 German cities. Because of lawsuits over the violation of European air quality standards, a ban on diesel was inevitable, says the regional environment minister. This won't just apply on certain days, but for the whole year for diesel vehicles that don't respect the so-called Euro 6 regulations. The cheating which took place with diesel engines has made our job really hard here in Hamburg. If we knew before there was such a difference between their pollution tests and what really happens here in the streets, we wouldn't have this nitrogen oxide problem right now. The ban will affect 70% of diesel vehicles and could set an example. Following the lead of Hamburg, Stuttgart and Munich, some 20 other towns are getting ready to follow suit if the National Administrative Tribunal gives its green light. In Berlin, a decision is expected in November. Here, as well, the nitrogen oxide levels are far above safety levels in certain areas. The possible change in the law could have a big effect on Jürgen Voltos and his taxi company. A few weeks back, he cancelled an order for new cars. Here's the document confirming the cancellation of our January the 4th order. So this means we now have three cars less. But we have no choice. The situation is too iffy. We have no idea how things are going to evolve. And that's what keeps me awake at night. His fleet of 40 cars is all diesel. So his entire business model is under threat. Like many others in Germany, Jürgen is looking for someone to take responsibility. The car manufacturers cheated, they lied and they scammed us. They sold us their diesel engines as more environmentally friendly alternatives. But now we're finding out that in reality their diesel is a killer for humanity. Two-thirds of Germans are in favour of a diesel ban in downtown areas. But for ADAC, the biggest automobile club in Germany, this measure is unfair. It punishes first and foremost the actual victims of the fraud, it says. Some 13 million car owners could be affected if the ban goes nationwide. Some of these vehicles were bought in the last two years, but now they're going to be banned from the roads. That amounts to robbing consumers. First, they lose their ability to move around, and second, their car loses a huge amount of its value. ADAC is telling its 19 million members not to buy diesel. A big setback for automobile makers. The German Car Dealers Association says the diesel debate has pushed prices down by 10 to 20 percent. Sales are in free fall. According to the NGO, behind several lawsuits in the most affected cities, there is a way to lower diesel motors pollution by 25 percent at a cost of 1,000 to 1,500 euros per vehicle. Sure, it's going to cost a lot of money, but it's not insurmountable for the car makers. Our position is clear, the diesel bans can be avoided, 
as long as the polluting vehicles are upgraded and improved. So diesel could be saved, but at what price? The federal government is now stepping in. It's created an agency to monitor pollution. And, mindful of the consequences for Germany's powerful auto industry, it's negotiating a recall of some 12 million vehicles. Well, for more on this story, we can speak now to Nicolas Meillon, an expert in all things energy and transportation, who joins me now here on set. Thank you very much for being with us here on France 24. Uh, first of all, what do you make of the, of the German uh, schemes that were featured in that report? Are they far-reaching enough? Will they work? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's going in towards the, the good direction because we have a problem in Europe. It's not only in Germany, but it's also in France, in the UK, with the nitrogen dioxide levels, which are far higher than what the limit is in Europe and the limit which should be met since 2010. So to limit the circulation of the most polluting vehicles on the most crowded roads is definitely the right, the right way to move forward. And then there is you know, two ways to deal with it. Either you just say to the people, you can't take this road anymore, mm -hmm. Oh, you, you can tell them you can update, re, uh, upgrade your car with uh, systems that, that you know, uh, reduce pollution. Um, but what more can city halls or national governments do to try, and, to try and curb this trend and stamp out this kind of pollution? We've heard from, of course, the French government today. They've been saying that they want to end the sale of petrol and diesel vehicles, all petrol and diesel vehicles, by 2040. Yeah, this is... This is going probably towards the, the right direction. But the priority today is to take off the cars in the car park, right, that are on the roads which are polluting if you want to reduce the, the pollution. So there is an initiative of cities that are teaming up together. Uh, it's called C40 organization. And for example, you have uh, Paris, Athens, um, Madrid, uh, which recently announced that by 2025, diesel will be banned in, in Paris. And there is an opportunity to create a, what we call a, a clean diesel label, which will be for cars which meets the European norms, Euro 6, in real driving condition. Because today the problem is you have a big gap between the lab testing and the real driving. And this could definitely in help in reducing uh, pollution levels. At the current time, do we have any idea or any proof of how much um, air pollution, how much the pollution in the air, sorry, is actually linked to vehicle fumes? Well, you have, uh, we have a good understanding. You have two main pollutants, particles, and this is, we know that the pollution in the air is 15 to 25% linked to particles. But the, the other one is the nitrogen dioxide, and this is more than 50%, mm. uh, which is linked to fuels, not only cars, but also trucks and bus. And so we have to work on this, all those vehicles, and not only in Berlin or in Hamburg. It has to be at the European level because those pollution, you know, um, travels. Uh, so if you want to reduce it, everybody has to do it. We heard in there um, in our report um, that, uh, of course, uh, diesel fumes, petrol fumes are harmful to humans. Do we know the full extent to how harmful they are? Yeah, of, of, we have some, uh, some ideas, some, some data has been published by the European Commission. In Europe, for your information, it's about, for particles, which is not only emitted by, by cars, of course, huh? it's about 400,000 people uh, premature deaths per year, which is, which is significant. For nitrogen dioxide, we are talking about uh, 70,000 uh, per year, and out of this, half of it is from the, the vehicles road transport. So this is significant. For your information, car accident, road accident in Europe is 23,000 people per year. So it's much more than that. Indeed. Um, but does all this mean that we're now seeing the beginnings of the end of diesel or petrol vehicles, it be in Europe or in the world, or can they actually now be cleaned up? Well, this has happened before in Japan, and they get rid of diesel back 15 years ago because there was too much pollution from particles. And, and what we're seeing in, in Germany, but also in France, in the UK and Spain, is that definite sales are falling. So we could see at least diesel kick out from city centers. It's still relevant, you know, when you travel for long distance, etc. And you don't have this pollution issue of the concentration. But definitely, I think the diesel days within city centers are counted. And of course, world leaders are meeting in Hamburg uh, this weekend with Chancellor Angela Merkel pushing climate change and green energy to the top of the agenda there. And um, what would be your message to those leaders as they meet there for that G20 summit? Well, I think the Europe uh, Commission and have been very much more lax than the US to act. Uh, for example, on the scandal, if you take, uh, uh, if you take, if you take the US uh, Volkswagen, there was 500,000 cars concerned and they paid 15 billion euros. And in Europe, you have about 25 million cars, not only Volkswagen, all the cars, mm. and nobody pays nothing. 
So they have to tack. They have to act. We have to take some decision both at the European Commission levels, which are doing with some new tests, but also at the local levels like Hamburg. And that's only if all those decisions are taken that will manage to reduce significantly the level of pollution. Okay, Nicolas Mayon, thank you very much for being with us yeah. here on France 24. Thank you.